Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Who redeems us from sin and death. For us and for the salvation of all, Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Let us pray. Holy and ever-living God, by the suffering and death of Jesus, you save us from Adam's fall. Grant in your mercy that we may be drawn to Christ, lifted high on the cross, and by his redeeming love be raised to everlasting life with him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand now and join me in hymn number 504 in your red hymnals.
and you may be seated. The psalm for today is Psalm 22. The print that is bold is the song response, uh, and we actually begin uh, with the song uh, portion of the psalm setting for tonight. I have cried desperately for help, but still it does not come. During the day, I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. I call at night, but get no rest. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted you and you saved them. They called to you and escaped from danger. They trusted you and were not disappointed. I am a worm and no longer human, despised and scorned by everyone. All who see me make fun of me. They stick out their tongues and shake their heads. You relied on the Lord, they said. Why doesn't he save you? If the Lord likes you, why doesn't he help you? It was you who brought me safely through birth. When I was a baby, you kept me safe. I've relied on you since the day I was born, and you have always been my God. Many enemies surround me like bulls. They are all around me, like fierce bulls from the land of Bashan. They open their mouths like lions, roaring and tearing at me. My strength is gone, like water spilled on the ground. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like melted wax. My throat is as dry as dust, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You've left me for dead in the dust. Like a pack of dogs, 
the wicked close in on me, tearing at my hands and feet. All my bones can be seen. My enemies gamble for my clothes and divide them among themselves. I will tell my people what you have done. I will praise you in their assembly. The Lord does not neglect the poor or ignore their suffering. He does not turn away from them, but answers when they call for help. The poor will eat as much as they want. Those who come to the Lord will praise him. May they prosper forever. All nations will remember the Lord. From every part of the world they will turn to him. All races will worship him who is the king who rules the nations. All who sleep in the earth will bow down to him. All who go down to the dust. Future generations will serve him. They will be told about the Lord. People not yet born will be told, the Lord saved his people. Those who are able are invited to stand for the hymn, hymn 290.
the passion of our Lord according to John. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The religious leaders who collaborated with the Roman occupation were conspiring against Jesus. They had gathered in the place or palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. This man had received the high priesthood at the hand of Valerius Gratus, the former Roman governor, and now retained the office under Pontius Pilate. They all were planning to arrest and destroy Jesus quietly so as to avoid popular revolt among the Jews. At this time, Jesus was lodging at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. While he was there, a woman approached and anointed him from an alabaster jar of pure nard. When his disciples saw the act, they were outraged. Why this waste, they demanded. Such costly ointment might have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. Jesus responded, why do you bother the woman? The poor are always with you. Indeed, I tell you that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in her memory. Then one of the twelve named Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What will you give me if I deliver Jesus to you for the governor? When they heard the offer, they were glad and promised Judas thirty pieces of silver. From that hour, he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. At the beginning of the feast, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples of Jesus approached him and asked, Where do you wish us to prepare the Paschal meal? Jesus took two of his disciples and instructed them, Go into the city and you will see there a man carrying a water jar. He will show you a suitable place. The two did as Jesus commanded. They entered the city where they found the man with the water jar who brought them to a large upper room. When evening had come, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you truly that one of you is going to betray me. The disciples were stunned with grief and began to protest one after the other. Surely not I, Jesus be replied. The betrayer is one of you dipping his hand in the dish with me. The Son of Man is fulfilling scripture. But woe to that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Then Judas slipped out into the night. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. After reciting the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples as he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then taking the cup with the traditional blessing, he gave it to his disciples and he said, This is my blood of the covenant which is being shed for many. I tell you in truth that I shall not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it fresh in the kingdom of God. Then having sung a hymn, they left the city for the Mount of Olives. As they walked, Jesus said to his disciples, You will all desert me this very night. 
So it is written in the prophet Zechariah, Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Then Peter protested, Though all desert, I will remain with you. And Jesus replied, I tell you truly that in this very night, before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Still Peter maintained, even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so declared all the disciples.
Jesus halted in an olive grove called Gethsemane. Then going apart with Peter, James, and John, he left them on watch and continued a little farther alone. There he fell on his face in anguished prayer. Soon he returned to the three on watch and found them sleeping. Rousing them, he asked Peter, could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you are not put to the test, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went apart in troubled prayer. And again, he returned to find the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. A third time, Jesus withdrew to pray. And a third time, he found the disciples sleeping. Then Jesus said, sleep on you and finish your rest. Now is the time for the son of man to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus had not finished speaking before Judas, one of his own disciples, arrived with a group of Roman soldiers and other armed men from the temple. Now the betrayer had arranged with the authorities for a sign and had said, the man whom I kiss is the one you want. In accord with this arrangement, Judas went directly to Jesus and cried out, greetings, master. Then he gave him the kiss. Jesus responded, Judas, would you betray the son of man with a kiss? Immediately, the soldiers laid hands on Jesus and held him fast. Then one of his disciples with Jesus drew the sword and cut off an ear from the slave of the high priest. But Jesus said to him, sheath your sword. All who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not know that I can call upon my father and that he will respond at once with more than 12 legions of angels? Then turning to the mob, Jesus continued, have you come for me as against a rebel bandit with swords and clubs? Why did you not seize me in the temple where I sat teaching by day? Were you so afraid of the Jewish people that you must come for me by stealth? Nevertheless, your actions are fulfilling the words of the prophets. Then all of his disciples forsook him and fled. Those who had seized Jesus brought him to Capernaus from the Romans had made a high priest. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard. There he sat with the attendants and warmed himself by the fire. The high priest had gathered his whole council and they began to arrange the case against Jesus which they would present to Pontius Pilate, the governor. The charge was that Jesus claimed to be the king of the Jews and they brought him in and brought in many false witnesses, but to no avail. Finally, two came forward and testified. We heard this man say, I will tear down the temple made with hands and within three days build another not made with hands. The testimony was evidence that Jesus claimed an authority over temple affairs, which traditionally belonged only to the rulers of Israel. And in those days, Israel was ruled by Rome, but yet, from Rome. Yet even these witnesses were unable to agree on their testimony. Finally, Capri took up and examined Jesus directly. Have you no answer to these charges, demand the high priest? Jesus remained silent and answered nothing. Then the high priest put the question of kingship in terms of the royal titles, anointed and the son of God. Are you the anointed one, the son of the blessed? He probed. Jesus answered, I am and you shall see the son of man seated on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. The high priest turned and said, what need have we of witnesses? He has condemned himself. They all concurred that Jesus was indeed worthy of death. Then those holding Jesus began to spit on him. They covered his face and were striking him as they taunted him and said, O oh, anointed one, prophecy who it is who is striking you. Now Peter was warming himself in the courtyard when a small slave girl entered. She confronted Peter and said, 
you also were this Jesus of Nazarene. Peter quickly gave a denial. I do not know what you're talking about, he replied, and went outside into the gateway. Meanwhile, the cock crowed. The slave girl followed Peter out and said to the bystanders, this man is the one, <clears throat> the one they, again, Peter denied knowing Jesus. After a little while, the bystanders said directly to Peter, surely you are the one for you speak with a Galatian accent. Then Peter began to swear with an oath. I do not know this person of whom you are speaking, but the cock interrupted him as he crowed for the second time. Immediately, Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly.
When morning arrived, all of the chief priests, along with the other Roman collaborators, bound Jesus and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate, the imperial Roman governor. When Judas saw what was happening, he knew that Jesus was doomed and he repented. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and confessed, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? They responded, that is your affair. Judas threw down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple and then he went out and hanged himself. Picking up the silver pieces, the, the chief priest said, it is unlawful to put this silver into the treasury for it is blood money. Whereupon they used the money to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. Therefore, that field is known to this day as the field of blood. Jesus stood before the Roman governor as the accusers made their charge. We found this man perverting our nation, they said. He was forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, proclaiming himself to be the anointed king. The governor asked, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, you say so. The chief priests were accusing him of many things. Therefore, Pilate again spoke to Jesus. Have you no answer to give? He asked, look at how many accusations they are making. Jesus astonished Pilate by remaining silent. At that festival, the governor used to release a prisoner, and some were urging Pilate to do so at this time. Now there was a notable rebel in prison with those who had committed murder during the insurrection. His name was Jesus Barabbas. Therefore, the chief priest arranged a demonstration to demand Barabbas. Pilate asked them, whom do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Anointed One? The demonstrator shouted, Barabbas. Pilate responded, What shall I do then with Jesus the Anointed One? The crowd shouted, Crucify him. Pilate continued, Are you certain of his guilt? The crowd took up the chant, crucify him, crucify him. Again, Pilate spoke, shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar, cried the demonstrators. Then Pilate agreed to release Jesus Barabbas, but Jesus the anointed one, he handed over to his soldiers for scourging and crucifixion. The soldiers led Jesus away within the governor's palace. There they assembled the home battalion. They clothed Jesus in royal purple. They set a crown of thorns upon his head and shoved a reed between his fingers for a scepter. They began to mock him by kneeling before him and proclaiming, Hail, King of the Jews! They also spat upon him and smote him on the head with a stick. Then, after mocking him, they took away the purple 
returning his own clothes, and brought him out to crucify him. On the road, they met an African of Cyrene named Simon, coming in from the countryside. Him they compelled to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. There, they crucified him. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he refused it. His garments they divided among themselves, casting lots for them. Over his head they inscribed the charge against him, the king of the Jews. Also, there were two insurrectionists crucified with him, one to his right and one to his left. Those who passed by were shaking their heads in derision and saying, So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself. Come down from the cross. Likewise, the priestly collaborators mocked him as they said to one another, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let the anointed one, the king of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Even the two crucified with him reviled him. Now from midday, there was darkness over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At that hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, words that mean, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders said, look, he is calling for Elijah. One of them put a sponge full of vinegar on a stick and laid it to his lips. Others said, Wait, let us see. Maybe Elijah will come to take him down. 
Then Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, breathed his last breath. Suddenly, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Even the tombs of the dead were opened. Now, when the centurion on watch and the others who were with him saw all that was taking place, they filled with awe and said, this man truly was God's royal son.
Join me as we read verses from Isaiah 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. The concluding hymn is hymn 287. The number in the bulletin is wrong. It's 287. And as we stand, those who are able, uh, as we stand to sing this hymn, for those who wish to come forward and to offer any devotions at the cross uh, to my left or before you uh, here at the chancel rail, you're invited to do so while we sing this last hymn.
Let us pray that prayer together that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. As I lead in this last prayer, we're going to leave in silence, and I invite you to stay here and spend more time at the altar if you so choose. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, and to your holy church, peace and accord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory, for with God and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen.